In the world of hip-hop, legends often collide, but none more famously than Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G. discover the explosive reasons behind their bitter feud and tragic ends. Stay tuned for the untold story of why Tupac and Biggie were beefing. Uncover the untold secrets of hip-hop's greatest rivalry. Subscribe now for exclusive insights and behind-the-scenes stories. The 2002 feature-length documentary Biggie and Ampi Tupac by Nick Broomfield is about the assassinated American rappers Christopher, Notorious B.I.G., Wallace, and Tupac Shakur. Sug Knight, the owner of Death Row Records, is said by Broomfield to have organized the two murders. It is also alleged that the Los Angeles Police Department, LAPD, was complicit. The large guy next to him in the car. Sug Knight, Broomfield responded, citing Snoop Dogg, when asked who killed Tupac in a BBC radio interview on March 7, 2005, even though the movie is still ambiguous. The movie claims that Suge Knight planned to kill Biggie Smalls to draw attention away from his role in the murder of Tupac before Tupac could leave Knight's death row records business. Russell Poole, an ex-detective, provided the theory and interviews for Broomfield's documentary. Poole asserted that Knight's plot to assassinate Biggie and Tupac was covered up by the LAPD ex-detective Russell Poole, believed that Suge Knight had collaborated with them to kill Biggie along with ex-cops David Mack and Amir Muhammad. Poole also claimed that he was fired from the department when he informed his supervisors of evidence implicating fellow cops who had served as bodyguards for Knight and his record company on the side. Kevin Hackey is a crucial source for Poole's hypothesis. Hackey accuses alleged corrupt police, Suge Knight, David Mack, and others of being involved in the killing of Biggie. In the movie, when questioned by Broomfield, Hackey admits that Harry Billups, also known as Amir Muhammad, was responsible for the murder, though he denies knowing why. In a statement dated June 6, 2004, former death row bodyguard Hackey claimed to have personal knowledge of Wallace's murder and claimed that persons within death row records offered $25,000 to a law enforcement officer to assassinate Wallace. Few artists in the world of hip-hop music are as well-known as Biggie Smalls, also known as the Notorious B.I.G. and Tupac Shakur. Both rappers were the biggest acts in the genre during the 1990s on their respective U.S. coasts. Initially, the two were close friends who respected one another. However, as their fame and other factors pushed them to become savage rivals, their friendship swiftly crumbled, leading to both of their terrible deaths. So given everything above, what precisely sparked the conflict between Biggie and Tupac? What is known about the relationship in addition? For all the information on what transpired between when their careers were at their height, the tale of his close friends who became adversaries is as old as time itself, and in the case of Biggie and Tupac, it was sparked by a bloody night in New York City. On November 3, 1994, California Rapper Tupac was shot, assaulted, and robbed as he approached Quad Recording Studios at the direction of Biggie associate Lil Cease. Following his recovery, Tupac learned that Biggie and Puff Daddy were both present inside the studio when the attack occurred, which prompted him to suspect that they were responsible for the entire incident. Tupac was given a year and a half in prison for sexual abuse within days of the incident because he was unable to pay a $3 million bail placed on his head. Records. Tupac planned to bring down Biggie's record company, Bad Boy Records, while they were both incarcerated. Biggie's now famous song, Who Shot Ya, which many people perceived as a direct jab at Tupac while he was in prison, was released at the same time as Tupac was being held in prison. Tupac took Biggie's repeated denials that the song was written before the shooting as a direct attack and started dissing the Brooklyn rapper. Tupac alleged Biggie was responsible for the shooting in several songs, claimed the younger rapper stole his style, and even boasted about having sex with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans. Biggie attempted to settle the conflict, but Tupac seemed unable to accept anything less than the notion that his rival on the East Coast was scheming to have him killed. Unfortunately, their disagreements were never settled since on September 7, 1996, Tupac was slain in a drive-by shooting in Las Vegas. Biggie was shot and killed in a drive-by shooting in Los Angeles less than a year later, on March 9, 1997. Both of the rappers' deaths are still mysteries, 
and the tale of their feud is still talked about incessantly in the hip-hop world. Tupac was genuinely looked up to and regarded as a friend by Biggie until relations between the two artists soured. Tupac was already a well-known celebrity with hit singles and movie deals in the early days of rap for Biggie. While Tupac was filming Poetic Justice, the two crossed paths and Biggie discovered that the well-known celebrity was a lover of his music. They grew close, and Biggie even performed on stage with Tupac while staying at his Los Angeles house on several occasions. To take over as his manager at one point, Biggie even begged Tupac. Tupac vehemently disagreed, reportedly telling Biggie that it would be better for his career overall if he stayed with Puff. Unfortunately, the shooting that took place outside Quad Recording Studios not long after destroyed any hope of Biggie and Tupac making up before their deaths. Hackey later admitted to the Los Angeles Times in an interview that his mental drugs caused memory loss. The Wallace family's $500 million lawsuit against the city of Los Angeles for Biggie's passing was founded on the statements he made in the movie. But Hackey later claimed to the LA Times that the Wallace lawyers had changed his remarks and that's why he skipped testifying in their lawsuit. In 2010, the $500 million lawsuit was dismissed. According to a 2005 in the LA Times, Psycho Mike, a schizophrenic who admitted to hearsay, memory lapses, and wrongly identifying Amir Muhammad, was another basis for the Poole Sullivan theory, blaming Amir Muhammad, David Mack, Suge Knight, and the LAPD in the Wallace suit. The LA Times report, according to John Cook of Brill's content, demolished the Poole Sullivan theory of Biggie's murder as it was depicted in the movie. In contrast to Broomfield's assertion that Suge Knight was responsible for Tupac Shakur's death, a 2002 two-part Times investigation by reporter Chuck Phillips, titled Who Killed Tupac Shakur, was based on a year-long investigation and reconstructed the events leading up to Shakur's murder using police affidavits, court documents, and interviews with investigators, purported witnesses to the crime, and Southside Crips members. Phillips claimed that the rounds that killed Shakur were fired by Crip Orlando Anderson, who Shakur had attacked. Anderson wasn't taken seriously as a suspect by Las Vegas police, who just conducted a single quick interview with him. In a subsequent unconnected gang shooting, he was later slain. While there are frequently high-profile portions of beef in hip-hop, such as Drake vs. Pusha T, Nicki Minaj vs. Cardi B, or Nas vs. Jay-Z, none of them come close to Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G.'s prominence. A classic tale of friends becoming enemies, neither party would live to tell the tale as their untimely deaths contributed to the rivalry's legend. Tupac and Biggie, two of the most prominent rappers of the 1990s, were destined to guide a new wave of rap for many years to come. The reason why that didn't occur is described here. Even though Pac allowed Biggie to stay at his California home while he was in town during their brief friendship, as Pac mentioned in his 1996 song, Hit Em Up, more on that below, this affinities would not last for long. Pac was shot five times in the studio foyer in 1994 when he went to record with Biggie and Little Sean, another New York MC, at Quad Recording Studios in Times Square. Although it hasn't been proved, Pac thought Biggie and Diddy had set him up that day. Biggie would refute this assertion, and he would live and make a full recovery, but Pac would not be convinced. When Biggie's single, Who Shot Ya, was out, that did not help either in February 1995, along with his then number one hit, Big Papa. Even though Biggie tried to explain that Who Shot Ya was a more ambiguous response to drug dealers he used to deal with, Tupac was misled into thinking it was a dig to him, Tupac released Hit Em Up, a clear, direct, and strong diss to Biggie, in June 1996 after being freed from jail for an unrelated violation. In it, he claims to have had a sexual relationship with Biggie's wife, Faith Evans, which she disputed, and he delivers the ferocious song about the 1994 shooting. Evans, Biggie's wife, claims that he was unaware of the attack and that he immediately wept when he learned of Tupac's passing. Evans told MTV in 2002, I remember B.I.G. calling me and crying the night Tupac was shot. I am positive he was in Jersey. He was in astonishment when he called, crying. 
given everything that was going on at the time, and the publicity that was given to this supposed beef that he didn't have in his heart against anyone, I believe it's fair to say that he was probably terrified. But Biggie would suffer the same fate less than a year later. Biggie was shot and killed in his automobile at a stoplight while in Los Angeles in March 1997 for the Soul Train Awards. He was 24 years old. Authorities and people close to Biggie believe the murder was planned by a death row member in vengeance for Pac's death, similar to how Tupac's killing was handled. The tale of Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G. stands as a powerful reminder of the heights and depths of fame within the hip-hop world. Their friendship turned rivalry became a defining moment in music history, but it was also a tragedy that led to the untimely deaths of two iconic artists. As we delve into the complex web of events that fueled their feud, we invite you to subscribe for more in-depth stories, insights, and music history. Stay tuned and never miss a beat. Subscribe now to continue exploring the stories behind the music legends.